Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the second Friday of the month, which means it's time for the plant-based kitchenista, Chef Kelly Williamson. And coincidentally, it's also bundle week, and she has an amazing contribution to the bundle, and she's going to be making one of her recipes from the bundle on the show today. It has to do with soba noodles. Please welcome back Chef Kelly. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. You've got a new chef coat. You know, all the years I've known you, 10 years, it's always been blue. I always, you know, that the jean jacket things are so comfortable. And so, you know, you said, you know, hey, change the jacket up. And and Jerry's like, change the jacket up. I was going to use the one that I have that it was a tie dye because I was like, spice it up. But I was like, red spice it up. So no, it, looks, it, it looks great. But I'm curious why you never put your name on your chef coat because I just forget to do it and I need to go do it. I need to find a tailor that's here or somebody just here in town and just be like, put them on there and give them my four jackets. So Absolutely. There's usually, there's usually embroidery places or places that do like, you know, like little league teams or, uh, you know, yeah. things like places that do trophies usually do it. And even I've seen yeah. it at swap meets and they usually charge, I don't know, like a dollar a letter or something like that. Yeah. I need to do it. I just, it's just one of those things and stuff that, you know, it's just, you get, get used to not doing it and I need to do it. So yeah. I've got four or five jackets. I can put it on and do that. I mean, it's fun. It's fun to customize. Yeah, exactly. I love, I've seen some jackets where they customize like the cuffs and the, you know, oh. the, the lapels and, and they're really pretty. But oh, I would love to do that. Jill Nussa now has a, a purple chef coat and like the sleeves are like vegetables and the, I would, oh my God, that would be the best. Yeah. It's expensive. Cause I actually, I went to somebody and was like, Hey, can I, you know, can you look at like making one for me and then, you know, putting the, putting the fabric and things like that on it. And then I, you know, eventually we could sell them or something, but she wasn't interested in it, but they were, it was going to, it was going to be very expensive. It's going to be a couple hundred dollars to do that. Yeah, it, it really is. I've, I've been trying for years to get Julie Smith, the artist that I met in the desert that made a lot of the fun shirts you see me wear hand painted to make me a chef coat that I would wear on the show. But that hasn't happened yet because it's apparently hard to just find a plain white chef coat that is the material she needs. But yeah. it's fun to have. I used to have a tie when I worked at the, at the restaurant. At Sante Restaurant, I was the pastry chef. And at the time, I had a tie dyed chef coat. And yep. it, and she, Gordon Ramsay was coming to the restaurant because there was some TV show at the time. I can't remember where he was helping restaurants. And, and he, he comes up to me. I don't even know him. He goes, well, who threw up on your coat? I'm like, he wasn't very thanks. nice. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Chef Ramsay. <laughs> but I He's do not for that kind of stuff, stuff though. Yeah. That, that was the only bad thing about losing weight is that chef coat. It just, it just, I couldn't, there are certain things you can't always, you know, fix to make smaller. And that was one of them, yep. so but I do love tie dyed. I do love it so much. I, I always wondered why they make chef coats white when, I mean, that's the, you, you know how Everything. much a chef works by how stained their chef coat is because yep. when, when I've been to conferences, the executive chef, their coat is pristine as white and white because they're doing all the administrative stuff. They're not actually, because if you cook, your chef coat's going to get dirty. Exactly. It's exactly yeah. right. I have no idea why they're white. I see it. I think I see a lot more restaurants though that are not, good, not doing the white or if they do, they have 30 white jackets that they keep. So, yeah. It, you know, it, um, it true North that chef Bravo and all the other chefs, they were black. Yeah. Yeah. And, I would too. I mean, you can still see stuff on black, but it keeps a little bit, it looks a little bit better. It doesn't see all the stains. Which I, is nice. And, and also some, you know, I, I have one short sleeve chef coat that I like, but I learned that the reason they're long sleeve is so we don't burn ourselves so much. Get all the splatters. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah. So if well, you ever want another, if you ever want another tie dye, go to Etsy. Etsy yeah. actually has a lady that does tie dye chef jackets. I will check it out. Well, welcome to the vegan health bundle. Thank, uh, thank you so much for being in it. I'd love to know not only what your contribution is. And of course, if you'd like to get it from chef Kelly, there's a link right below. That means right below this video, it's called show notes. You just click on more and you can get it for her up until the bundle ends, which is 1159 PM Pacific time on Sunday, March 11th. So I'd love to know what your contribution is and what other things caught your eye in the bundle that you're excited to dive into. Oh yeah. I mean, anything I always, I'm, I'm a big fan of Alyssa because anything that she does is raw. And I'm always trying to like, you know, I always think about, geez, I'd like to try more raw. I've done the actual, um, the wraps and stuff, which was really fun. I had to experiment a couple of times to get them right. But then once I got them right, they were wonderful. And I always like watching like raw tacos, things like that really like interest me. And I just like seeing, you know, I, I watch, I watch all the information, like, you know, Dr. McDougall and everybody else, because there's just great information. 
And I know a lot of people will say, ah, seen it, done it, did it, know everything that Dr. McDougal said, but he's always in something new. And there's like everybody that's in there always has something new that they've learned about, you know, being plant-based or what's going on in the world or, or those type of things, because our world's all ever changing. So why not learn more information? But, you know, anything cooking, I am, I'm all about like eye candy, love to look at things and see how people do it. And it could be something where maybe I don't want part of the recipe, but I love the sauce or that type of thing. Why not? It just adds to your repertoire and it's just nice to be able to do that. So love the bundle. Thank you so much for that. Absolutely. And what did you contribute this year? So we actually did, we did four recipes. So we did a Southwestern scramble. We did a, um, we did a sesame noodle salad. We did, I'm trying to think a couple other things. Um, Jerry's with me. So he's a plant-based nutritionist. So he's got, um, he's got about 190 recipes that he actually put there. We also gave access and stuff to some of our cooking classes that we do because we do these, you know, we do these kind of classes about every two weeks. Um, what else did we put in there? Jerry gave a free complimentary, um, he just handed me the paperwork, gave me a complimentary uh, 30 minute session with him. We've got Italian rustic lentil soup. And then this is my favorite and my neighbor's favorite. She's 81 spaghetti squash bowls. So she loves those. And there's nothing better than using spaghetti squash and, and, and enjoying that, which is really good. So lots of recipes, lots of tips and tricks, um, lots of nutrition advice. Jerry's on the videos with me, which is really fun. So he talks about nutrition advice when I'm making things. So lots of fun, lots of fun and, and lots of good recipes. I think we need to get your neighbor on the show. I've been saying that for a few yes. months. I asked her about that and she said, oh, absolutely. <laughs> That's so gonna, probably uh, next, maybe next one. Yep. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So soba. Is soba buckwheat? Yes. I actually have the, I brought the, put this here. Yeah, organic buckwheat soba noodles. Nice. So they come, they come in little packs. So they're really cute. So they come in these little packs that are wrapped up. So you've got a total of about 12.8 ounces. I would say no more than like if you're just by yourself, probably just using one of the packs that's wrapped up. But if you're going to be like a couple people, then do two of the packs. But then that means you still have two more packs left over, which is very nice. And are they literally is the only ingredient in them buckwheat or buckwheat flour? What are they? How are they made? So they've got organic buckwheat flour, um, a little bit of salt, and then that's it. Salt nice. in it. Yeah. So like your, you know, your, your fat content, everything, your sodium content's really low, fibers, you know, high, that kind of stuff. So it's actually really good. It says uh, six servings per container, two ounce servings, 180 calories. So Great. not bad. No, nope. it seems like a very healthy pasta choice. Yes. And that's one of the things that, you know, with buckwheat noodles and stuff, you could actually do it, you know, like do like a, um, a marinara sauce on it with a bunch of vegetables. So you could use it many different ways, not just, you know, not more just Asian flavors. So always feel that, you know, that you can grab them and then you can always have them on hand, a couple packs and away you go. They're easy to make. Yum. Perfect. So are you ready to get started? Get started. All right, so we're going to get, so I'm going to get the noodles going both. So you'll see that I have uh, two of the pans going back here in the back. So I'm going to do the, the soba noodles first. Like I said, you just pull this little wrapping on it, which is very pretty. Drop those in. Always give it a quick little stir. Because if you're boiling, sometimes some stuff your noodles will stick to the bottom. So it's always nice to give it a little stir as you put them in. So those are ready. And then for the, the actual Thai let's, lettuce leaf wraps and stuff that we're going to be doing, we're actually going to be using just a regular whole grain linguine noodle. So you could do the same thing. If you're making both of these recipes together, you could just do soba for both. But it's kind of fun to play with a little bit different noodles. So this one is, so you've got uh, 16 ounces. You only need four. And I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna grab out a little bit. The only thing I don't like about pasta is it, you gotta cook it. It just seems like it takes so long. Yeah, you can buy, you can actually buy pasta now that's, um, and I don't know what the process is because I've never looked at it, but you can buy it that's already cooked. And it's like, you know, it takes what, two minutes to heat up or something in the microwave. So, but I would I, say sobas are, you know, a quick way to get around a lot of these pasta noodles, even though it takes, you know, it takes a few minutes and stuff to cook it. I did but not. Since, I did yeah. not know that. Yeah, it's um I'm trying to think of the brand. I've seen it in the stores and stuff. I've never tried it. Um, but I've heard people swear by it. So 
I'm just going to break them in half because if we're doing wraps, we don't need large noodles. In they go. Do a quick little stir. You know, it's it's interesting to me because I, I haven't eaten pasta in a long time. Not not I'm not afraid of it, but like I say, I'm too lazy to make it. And uh, there's a restaurant here that makes noodles out of just mushrooms. But you know, I mean, if you think about, we were talking about Dr. McDougall. And he has a wonderful offer in the bud room, bud bu bud room, the bundle. What's the bud room? <laughs> <That's for you. laughs> yeah, we have the. But, um, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that program has always allowed pasta, you know, and yeah. people still lose weight with it. And even True North, it's much much stricter um if there's it's gluten-free but they will do you know like uh, uh rice noodles or or, or you know or things like that, yep. You know? yep yeah because a lot of people i know there's a lot of people that are plant-based and stuff love noodles neighbor my neighbor and stuff that i that i do a lot of uh, meal prep for loves noodles so anything that's like a mushroom stroganoff what we made last week to like a hummus pasta to anything else her favorite capellini pomodoro i think is her favorite so I end up making a lot of that on Sundays and stuff and, and packing that up for just it's her favorite. Just good. You ever, you ever see the movie Kung Fu Panda? No, have not. Adorable. The fourth one is coming out next month, but the, the father of Poe, the, the big old uh, panda bear, we would always say, we noodle people, son. We noodle people. We noodle people. <laughs> I always loved that line, but yeah, I'm not going to start maybe eating pasta. I just wish somebody would cook it for me. You know what? Maybe you I, and can take turns, like two weeks you, two weeks her, you just move in here, make my food. That would be good. Yeah. You could do that. <laughs> Jerry you, loves noodles. He loves pasta. So. Yeah. But so does Charles and I never make it for him because then I got to boil the water and I get splatters and I burn myself and all that stuff. <laughs> I am uh, lazy. We could make it. Yep. Okay, just, you can already see that how the how the soba noodles start breaking down pretty quick. So just watching those so we don't overcook them. All right. So the sauce. One of the things, and one of the things that, that we wanted to let you know too is, you know, when you're doing soba noodles, because they talk about, you know, something that you're you're looking at that um that you want to make sure it's like gluten-free, soba noodles. That's another one. So all right. So the marinade for the cauliflower, because we're doing cauliflower. So a lot of times and stuff when you'll see like a Thai lettuce leaf, it'll use uh tofu. And so instead of doing tofu, I was like, let's mix it up and let's do cauliflower. Cause you know, you can buy a head of cauliflower, you could do half of it if you wanted, and the other half you could make it into the um um, like the wings, the wings flavoring, you know, the hot flavoring, if you like. So lots of, lots of uses for cauliflower. So we've got, got a half a cup of brown rice vinegar. We've got date paste. We're using that as the sweetener. If you don't have date paste, you can use anything else. You could use, you know, you could do the monk fruit, you can do the agave, you can do uh, maple syrup. Those are all the different ones. But if you have date paste or date syrup, great, use it. We've got some low sodium soy sauce. Oh, you, you know, also, if you, you, know you know, it's really delicious. Have you ever heard of I Love Date Lady who makes my favorite organic date syrup? Yes. She makes a sweet chili sauce. It does have a little salt, but it's sweetened with dates. It's Ooh. really good. I like it better than soy sauce. It's delicious. I will have to try that. I know that you said that you can get it at um, Wal not Walgreens, Walmart. Well, you, you can, can get it at Walmart or you can well, order it. Unfortunately, Walmart only carries her date syrup and her date sugar, but on her website, and you can use Chef AJ for 10% off. I, I could grab it if you want. So I, I got it for a present last year, a sweet chili sauce. It's really, really good. That would be good. I love anything. I'm actually using Zambal Alik um, today and stuff, but yeah, anything that's sweet chili sauce and the date lady sounds great. Love it. Yeah. Um, and- uh, that she's in the bundle date lady. So yeah. Oh, cool. Love it. Then I also just added three tablespoons of garlic, All right? So you just give it a little, a little swirl, kind of a whisk it in because you just want to get the date paste mixed in and that's your sweetener. It smells really good. When you do these kind of sauces and anything for like a Thai lettuce leaf wrap, it's just wonderful. So I'm just going to set that to the sides a little bit thick. Oh, the one thing I forgot really quick because I had it right in front of me is the ginger. So ginger just took it right out of the freezer and you can see that the, the skin is still on it. So don't worry about that. You don't have to take a spoon and scrape it off when you take it out of the, out of the, um, the refreezer and you just start grating it. If you end up with a little piece of skin of the, of the, of the, um, the skin of it, then just pull it out. So like something like that, if that bothers, just pull it like that a little bit and then just keep grating. So I'm actually going to do about three teaspoons of ginger. 
I buy the ones. When I'm done, go ahead. I buy the ones in the cubes from Trader Joe's that's frozen, you know? I have seen those. I have not used them because I, I have in my freezer and stuff, I have a pack of, of the frozen ginger and I probably have 10 or 15 of them. So I need to use that up before I would do something with the frozen. But I like the idea. Nothing better than having fresh ginger on ground. So when you're done, it's like when I'm done with this piece, I just throw it back in the, the Ziploc bag in the freezer and then I just use it next time. Never have to worry about not having fresh ginger. There. All right, so I'll just put that to the side. A little bit of a whisk. Let me grab the cauliflower. So the cauliflower is not cooked. I just did tiny little florets because if you think about, you know, usually on florets and stuff, you see them, they're about this big. I did the small ones because I'm thinking like if you're eating a lettuce wrap type of a thing, it's nice to have the smaller pieces. So I just cut them up, regular cauliflower. So I'm going to put most of the sauce on the cauliflower to be able to marinate it and let it start going. But I'm going to take, I'm going to keep two tablespoons of it in, in here. And I'm going to add that to the noodles when the noodles are done. So you have flavor everywhere. That's good. Let me check the soda noodles really quick. They don't take very long. Done. Kelly, can you cook pasta like a bunch of it and then just freeze it so you can just take it out when you need it? You know, I have not ever frozen. I've Trying to think if I've ever frozen just like pasta with it and not had sauce on it. I have a feeling what's going to end up happening with it. It's going to stick together. So I think if you had, if you had like the original like oil in it, um, and a lot of people put, put oil and things like that in their pasta, then it wouldn't stick together. But just the way that we do it, I think it would stick. And I think you'd have like one big glump of pasta versus the noodles. I'll have to try it though. I'll try it one of these times because I've not tried it, but I'm just imagining what it would look like. But if you freeze it like with marinara sauce, so if you made up a whole bunch of marinara um, and freeze that together, then I think it would probably hold up a lot better. All right, I'm just gonna drain it really quick. How do restaurants get pasta ready, you know, for everyone? They they do it all dente. So um, like so like I've got. So Chef Antonio, who I used to work with a lot in my cooking classes when we were doing the face-to-face -face cooking classes, what he does is like even like um, um, like arborio rice and all that, everything like that, he would get it like al dente and get it ready. And so he'd have it, you know, just ready to go. And it was like sort of cooked, but he had, but of course he had the oil in it and then would put it in, you know, get it ready and put it back into the water and stuff and get it. And it would be like, you know, two minutes ready to go. So that's with his tip and trick. I don't know if that's everybody's. Let me just put that to the side because we don't need those yet. Just mix in the sauce. And one of the things you could do this, if you wanted really saucy lettuce wrap tacos, then you could actually just, you could double, triple the sauce because it is a really good sauce. Where do, you, where do you get all your inspiration for your recipes? I do, I do a lot of like watching things just to see. Um, cause it's like, you know, if I've never tried, let's just say I grew up in Kansas. So, you know, like anything that was like Thai food, Vietnamese, uh, Morocco and you name it didn't happen. <laughs> it was, you know, your basic, you know, meat and potatoes, maybe, a, you know, maybe, a um, like a salad and stuff, but it was just like, what it was, a, what's the iceberg lettuce and a dessert. The desserts are always really fancy. And so one of those things and stuff I started doing was like watching videos and seeing what's out there. And then it's like, wow, that looks really good. And then I figure out on my own, like, what, what do I want to put together? How do I want to make it? I may like take a little piece of the sauce or something, but then add like 20 things to it. So that's what I do. I like, I'm, I'm very big on visual. So watching things and then watch them once I figure it out, then I'd like try it. And then of course, Jerry's always my, uh, he's kind of like my guinea pig is to try things. And he's like, yeah, I like that one, but not as much as that or this, that type of a thing. So we do that quite a bit. And check the noodles. No, they're still going. They're still good. All right. Let's get the sauce in there. So this sauce, we'll leave that for, for our noodles when those are ready. All right. So we've got the vegetables that are going to be in this, this lettuce wrap. And you could do anything. You know, you could do, if you end up having like yellow squash or you end up having some broccoli, you know, think about how you want to do this and, and add the color to it. 
It's all about, it's about, you know, warm vegetables, but then also fresh, you know, raw vegetables, but all mixed together with great sauces. So you could do, you know, you could almost use it as like clean out your refrigerator on a Sunday type of a meal, which is really nice. So we've got the cauliflower going. So we have, we've got the noodles going also, which is part of this. We've got, I spiralized half of it. And I'm just going to show you the spiralizer. So zucchini. So I've got some, some nice zucchini that's spiralized. So we're going to do what we're going to do with the vegetables is we're going to do just for fun to kind of zazz up, I guess, the recipe a little bit. We're going to, we're going to do part of them cooked and then part of them raw, which is really nice. So nice spiralizer. My dad actually had this, which I was shocked because um, I didn't think my dad would, would uh, have a spiralizer, but this is the, the Brankton's. And it's really a nice one. It's like $25, I think. And it's really cool because, wow, you have a lot of blades. I only have three with mine. How, how much Me did too. that? Yeah, that's amazing. It was, like, it was under $30. That's so really the good. Is, you know, because yeah. the ones they have that are really cheap, I forget what it's called. They're this handheld one. But I've seen yep. a lot of people cut themselves with those. Those are wonderful and they're safe. This is a linguine I'm going to use. And it's got two more here blades here that you can keep in there and it comes with all of these. So like curly fry, pappardelle, spaghetti, wavy slice or angel hair, all of these. And then the cool thing about it is like when you put it together to store it, it actually locks and stores just like that. Nice, my dad had it and I was like, oh my goodness, gotta have one. They even have, do you have the blade that's um like angel hair as well? Yes, I think it's, Yep, angel hair. That's, horse I have hair. never seen one with that many blades. That is definitely a find. Yeah. And it's on Amazon. So I after I, I got home and stuff, I looked it up and, and Amazon. So I think it was like right about like close to like $30. So I was like, yep, yeah, it's great. So all I did is that just to get the spiralizer, I just take the zucchini, I cut the ends off and I cut it in half because sometimes when you're trying to get a spiralizer, if it's not one of the big metal ones, it gets, you know, it's a little bit harder and stuff to get it going if you've got a, you know, a pretty big zucchini. So I just cut it in half and then you just start spinning and you'll see all these wonderful spiralized noodles that are coming out. I used to have an electric one. It was like 50 bucks, but I just couldn't start. I couldn't figure out how to use it after a while. It was made by Oster. Cool. It's so complicated. I had, I think I've had one that was, I think I had like a mandolin that was you know, it was one of these set up, setups that it goes, you know, it's like what the restaurants use. And I was like, you know, I don't need like this huge setup and it stood at like this tall and things. I just went to just a basic mandolin too. So this one, I, like I said, has been really nice. We've done curly fries. We've done, you know, we do them in the air fryer. We do all kinds of different things. So it's fun, fun, easy. And it's easy to clean too, which is really nice. Wait, so you, you do the spirals in the air fryer. That sounds really cool. Mm -hmm. We've done that with, um, we did it with the, the French rice and we've done it with um, sweet potatoes. You, if you do the sweet potatoes, you're going to want to use like the curly fry one because the one, when I spiralized, I put water in it just because I wanted to keep it from, because you know how sweet potatoes are. They get, once you cut them up, they'll start getting like little black spots on them. So let's drain them here. That's what I'm going to the sweet potatoes. This is actually the sweet potatoes. Oh my so, God. I yeah. love them. And, and, and the, it, the sweet potatoes are so hard. So that spiralizer worked on the sweet potatoes. Yep. Here we go. Here's the other half. Amazing. Oh. Cooperate with me now. Okay, got it. You can lock it. Lock on the end. It's a little more, so it's going to take, you know, it's it's definitely a workout with your arms and stuff, but it goes. So here is the spiralized sweet potato. So sweet potatoes, if you cook these up, so like if you had a wok pan, um, what's really good with these is in the wok, like a wok and stuff, is to spiralize, and you can make them a little bit thicker if you wanted to. So use this one, says, this one's linguine. But if you make these a little bit thicker, you can actually put them in a pan, put some marinara sauce on them, and you've got you've got um, sweet potato sweet potato noodles with marinara, which is really good. There's a yeah. restaurant here in town that does sweet potato noodles. 
So if it ends up getting, so what I what I find with the sweet potato, it does get stuck just sometimes. So if it gets just a little bit, you know, then you just take the end off, press it in again, and then it's just more about using the arm. And you kind of press into it and just keep it going. And then look at this. Nice. And, and you know, you you can buy them already spiralized now, even in sure can. Even the local Winco has them. So Yep, you can buy pretty much everything spiralized anymore. I think that I've seen the zucchini and I've seen the sweet potatoes. But you know, if you've got a bunch of sweet potatoes and want to do something, you know, in your air fryer or something like that, why not? And this is this is fun. Like especially if you're doing something for kids. Fun. All right, so we got that together. So we got the spiralized sweet potato. We got the spiralized zucchini. We've got the cauliflower that's marinating. We have red bell pepper that's in thin little slices. You could also do the little mini bell peppers if you wanted to. So you'd have like the little rounds of those, which is really nice. Those are kind of fun. Um, and those are the main ones. And then we've got, of course, Thai basil. So we've got the nice red Thai basil that's in here. Kind of the, it's kind of like actually more of a purple burgundy color. And then we're going to add some chives to it. Check my noodles. Getting really close. You ever spiral out? You, you don't like beets, Kelly, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> but you can, you, you can spiralize them. You sure can. I just would not. <laughs> just because I, I don't like, I don't even like the smell of beets. So yeah, I would, but I've seen, you know, the spiralized beets in the salads and I think they're really pretty, but if you put beets in anything with me, I can taste it and can't eat it. So I stay away from it, but yeah, anything like that, you could probably, I mean, you, you I mean, definitely you can do like a russet potato, you know, yellow potatoes, which are a little bit softer. I mean, all those, think of all the things you could spiralize and have fun with. You could do a whole spiralized, like, um, if you got some big carrots and stuff, like a big salad and it's nothing but the spiralized vegetables. That'd be summertime. That would be fun. Mm -hmm. All right. So we want to get the thoughts ready so it just can sit. I'm just going to grab this, another whisk. So we are going to be using almond butter. So this is just regular almonds that are ground up. So it's not anything that, you know, bought in the store or I bought, well, I bought it in the store and stuff, but it's not anything that was in a jar and stuff. It was made by um, Sprouts, which is really nice. So it's just almonds. I've seen but that. You know, I was recently at Whole Foods and they had that machine where you can just make grind your own of both peanuts and almonds. Yeah. And I've seen, I've, what else have I seen? I saw walnuts not too long ago that they did, but it didn't last very long. It's like, they, I don't know if it was not a big seller. People were like, mm. I think most people are like peanuts or um, almonds, but it was really nice to do. So you didn't get the jar that has, you know, this much of the, of the fat and stuff that's on the top. So nice almond butter, organic, organic almonds, which was great. So that was, um, so that's my almond butter. Got a little bit, a little bit of kick because we said spice it up. So a little bit of red pepper flakes. You don't have to add those, it's completely optional. But if you like a little spice, red pepper flakes are great. I love red pepper flakes on anything. Spaghetti, all that's the best thing in the world. Then I've got your brown rice vinegar. So a lot of commonalities in the recipes. And then we've got sambal alik, which I love. You can tell because my jar is almost empty. So it's time to go to the store. So it's a chili garlic sauce. So it's not a sweet, it's not a sweet one, but it's not real spicy either. But it's just a, it's really nice to add flavors to it. And I add, whenever time I do anything that's um, like an Asian sauce, sambal leek goes in it. But I like like the, the sweet chili sauces and all that. Love it. Those are my favorite. But this is regular grocery stores. And it's just, like I said, chili garlic sauce, or they call it sambal leek. So you can get it at the stores. Nice, fun. <laughs> All right, and then we've got two tablespoons of water because you want to have it where it's not so thick. And then I think the last thing is we've got toasted sesame seeds. And see, that's why I would just want to get it up ahead of time. So this is something you could do the day ahead of time. It's because your almond butter or your if you're using peanut sauce or something like our peanut butter, it takes just a little bit and stuff to mix it in with all the liquid but nice and nice and spicy. Let's see, I'm making it all just kind of, like I said, just every once in a while and stuff, you get a little bit of your almond butter that's in a chunk. 
Do you ever use that PB2? I never have, so I'm not sure how to use it. Is it the same? I have. Yeah. I do. So I've got, I've got the PB2. It's all you do is if you've got it, like two tablespoons of the PB2 and it's just dried. It's just like dried. Um, actually, I'll just show it to you. So this one's PB2 pure. Um, so no sugar, no salt added. Just, it's just the peanuts. Um, so it's all you do is just take like two tablespoons of it or yeah, two tablespoons of it. It's 60 calories, but you just mix in. It tells you exactly how to do it. You take about two tablespoons of water. So if you want it like really kind of like really smooth and creamy, then you're going to do about two tablespoons. If you want it more chunky, you do less. And that's all you do. You mix it up and it's ready to go. So they used to have the ones like it had all the sugar and salt and things like that added. But now they've got more of the organic or no salt, no sugar, which is nice. And so you can keep it, you know, you can keep it in your shelves and stuff and not have to worry about it so much. Is it the texture of peanut butter pretty much? It's, it's a powder. I'll just mix it up real quick. Grab a little dish. So it's just powder like that. A little bit of water. Oops. How did they get the fat out of it? It's just the peanuts. Let me just do this real quick so I can turn it over. And right, but do you know how they defat the peanuts? I don't. One, so there's, there's still fat. So right now there's one, so total fat is 1.5 grams. And sodium is zero. Because there's no sodium, there's no sugar. So that's, I just mixed it. That's the peanut butter. Whoop. <laughs> that's the peanut butter. All right. Wow. Very so clever. taste why. You know, this one, you know, if you've got the one, if you get the one that's just the PB2 and it has like this, you know, the salts and the sugar and things like that, which of course we recommend to stay away from. Then it tastes, it, it's very much like a, um, like a Jif or something like that, you know, the peanut butter, because it's the sugar and it's the salt and things like that added. This just tastes like you're eating just a regular, you know, just like a, a raw peanut is what it tastes like. So, but easy to have around, which is nice. All right. So this is ready to go. The sauce is ready to go. I'll just kind of keep pushing out the, the lumps. Let me get this ready. Sure, our soba's doing good. All right, I'm gonna drain my noodles. I love those pots with the holes in the thing. Yeah, these are great. This one is probably probably 25, 30 years old. Been around a long time. All right, so I've got the noodles. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just get I'm gonna get a little I want the noodles to soak the sauce. The sauce to it. So this was the sauce that we made a little bit earlier. That's the marinade that's on the, the cauliflower. But also what's nice about it when you put, if you've got a little bit of a sauce and stuff, let's just say that, you know, anytime you're making a noodle dish and you've got it kind of set into the side and you've got a marinade that you make, if you just add like a one or two tablespoons to it, or even just a couple of teaspoons, the nice thing about it, it keeps your noodles from sticking together. So you don't have to keep adding, you know, like the, the cold water or anything like that. So there's the noodles ready to go. My sauce ready to go. All right. So what we're going to start doing is we're going to we're going to actually start cooking the cauliflower. You could, if you want to stay raw, 
you could leave these all raw. But we're gonna start, we're actually gonna start cooking the pawflower. flour. Just a little bit of vegetable broth. And the nice thing about this too, if you think about it, you know, once you do, let's just say that you make this Thai lettuce leaf and you make everything that's on here and you get all the spiralized noodles and everything like that, you could just do the soba noodles really quick and then almost add the exact same sauces and everything to your soba noodles and have two dishes made out of just one, which is really nice. So in goes my cauliflower. The garlic hanging out. And then what I'm going to do to make it just a little bit different. Um, so when I'm when I'm doing this, I'm actually, like I said, I'm going to add a little bit of the zucchini noodles, a little bit of the spiralized, um, the, the sweet potatoes, and then a little bit of the red bell pepper. So the one thing that I didn't do and you can do is when you're, if you want to make it just, you only want to have your sweet potatoes cooked, but you know, you can eat them, you can eat them just like this. But if you want your sweet potatoes cooked, when you're actually boiling the noodles, you can actually put these in at the last minute and then just have them do like a quick, you know, like a quick simmer. And then it cooks your, your sweet potato noodles. But I'm just going to add them inside of here just to make it a little bit different. You can see all the little pieces of the cauliflower. So definitely made them more bite-sized. <laughs> and this is another one. You don't have to go buy just like what, you know, Chef Day, you and I talk about all the time. You don't have to go buy a whole head of cauliflower. You know, you can get the, the cauliflower florets. They're already chopped up. And then you just use, you know, a little bit of chopping to them and they're ready to go. So, you know, think about like when you're making things, you know, buy the spiralized zucchini and you can do the sweet potatoes and the bell peppers are cut up. I've seen like everything, especially now, all ready to go. So you could make this a really quick recipe. All right, so I'm just gonna let that kind of simmer a little bit to get it soft. And then I'll add everything else in here. So I've got my soba noodles. So let me grab my big bowl. And soba noodles are pretty. I mean, you, you get the regular, just, you know, the noodles and stuff that we're using for the, the Thai lettuce. The, the noodles are just, you know, just the regular color of noodles. You know, it's pretty. But soba, I mean, look at the color. That's what I love. I love anything that has lots of color. Well, that's why you like Thai dyed chef coats. Exactly. And I've only worn it once, though, because I think the one time I did wear it, somebody was like, they were like, and I was like, but it's pretty. It's cute. I like it. Chef Ramsey would have probably said the same thing to me. So, Oh, well. All right. So we've got the buckwheat noodles in here. So we're going to make a sauce for the, for the noodles. So we have very much the same ingredients. Let me grab everything. All right, so we've got a third cup of low sodium soy sauce. You could also use coconut aminos if you wanted to. That's another one that a lot of people like. Yeah, you I've know, there's one, somebody found one that's even lower in sodium called Dynamic Health. It's like 25 milligrams of sodium. It's called Dynamic Health? Dynamic Health, yeah. Huh. Is it was like in a store? They order it from um, I know for it sure. Store. I know for sure Amazon has it. Okay. I'll have to look at that because, yeah, because coconut aminos, I like a little bit of it, but not a lot. A little goes a long way. Rice vinegar, two tablespoons. I've got sesame seeds. You don't have to add the sesame seeds if you don't want to. A little bit of black pepper. Then I've got the date paste. That's my sweetener again. Mix that in. So taste-wise, that of course you know you've got the low sodium soy sauce, so you have just a little bit of the a little bit of the salt taste and stuff. But it kind of it, it, it tastes it's like a little bit salty, a little bit sweet, but very um. And then you got the sesame seeds, but really good. 
once you mix it in the salad, you don't need a lot because when you add it to the noodles and the vegetables, it goes a long way. So I'm gonna put that right to the side. All right, so we have we have green onions. So I'm gonna put most of those in. I just did them on a diagonal cut, so they're just pretty. I like that when you like when you go to all the sushi restaurants, they always do everything on a diagonal cut. I'm gonna use some because I want them for this topping. Pretty. I've got sugar snap peas, so about a cup of sugar snap peas. What I did, and what I always like to do is because sugar snap peas, I like them, and I, you know, I'll do them like in hummus and things. But the, but sometimes they're like too much. Like if you put them in a salad, so I just took them and usually like one one the sugar snap pea, I would slice it into threes. So you just got these nice little little pieces of them, which is really nice. So then it kind of mixes in with everything else that you've got. So I'm adding those in. And then the little mini bell peppers. If you don't have these, don't wanna, don't wanna buy these, then you just, you know, just chop up a little bit more of your red bell pepper and then you're ready to go. But I had some left over from a different recipe, so we're using them. And is this something you're going to eat hot or cold? You could do either one. So the, the noodles and stuff are, are definitely room temperature now, but it's completely up to you. So you could make it. So there's there's two different ways you could actually do this. So you could make the noodles you know, hot. You could cook the vegetables and everything's all cooked. And then this, you put the sauce on it, stir, serve it warm with, you know, what you do with the Thai lettuce, you know, leaf wraps, whatever you want to do. Or you can let it go to room temperature and put in all your fresh vegetables and then put it in the fridge and let it marinate. So hot or cold, either way, it's really good. And this is another one when we talked about that, you know, with this, that you can, you know, clean out the refrigerator and make your, your um, lettuce leaf taco wraps. Same thing with the sesame no um, soba noodle salad is if you've got some broccoli, if you want to cut that up, or you've got some red cabbage or um, any of those kind of things. So I actually have, I think I have red cabbage When you got something like, you know, red cabbage and green cabbage and you need to, you know, you've got, you want to definitely use it up or you're getting ready to go to the store. All right, just do. Nice little slivers of it. Jerry's favorite, every time I pull out, I pull out anything and I'm using red cabbage or some people would call it purple cabbage. Anytime I'm doing that, I usually have to end up cutting like twice as much because he sits there and, and like pieces at it. <laughs> so just by adding that, just because I want to go to the store tomorrow and buy some more, look at the colors. Beautiful. Bring this up a little bit. The cauliflower should be ready. I think purple cabbage tastes better for some reason. I agree. I, I mean, I like I like the Napa cabbage. I like I like pretty much any cabbage. You can do Brussels sprouts. Like if you have a bunch of Brussels sprouts left over, um, you could do any of those. The flavors and stuff. I tend to prefer red cabbage. I think it's just sweeter for some reason. So. And I also like it because it's pretty. Like when you put it in, like, you know, if you're doing like stir fries and stuff, just the color I think is beautiful. All right. So in goes the, so all goes the sauce. And it's like that simple. Do a quick toss because all of your pretty colors and your vegetables are always going to be on the bottom. And this is something that if you, you know, if you're getting ready to go to a party and, you know, especially with the summertime coming up, you know, you can definitely, what you could do is make this the day ahead of time and then just let it marinate. So just, you know, put a lid on it and then just shake it up a couple of times and make sure your sauce gets all marinated in there. And then you've got something that's simple, easy, but guarantee you everybody will love. So we'll put that together here in a minute. All right. So we're going to make, I'm going to add some of the wheat potatoes, but what I want to do is because like trying to eat that is a lot. 
I'm just kind of breaking them up. Just do a quick saute because they're so thin. Yep. The rest of the side, we will use those later. Zucchini. Same thing, big pieces. Does not take long when you do something that's spiralized. The vegetables are pretty fast for cooking. I will do this a lot when I'll, if I, you know, my walk and stuff that's usually, usually on a back burner, but I needed the space today. Um, with my walk, I'll throw in zucchini. So spiralized zucchini noodles. What I'll do is like on a Sunday, I will spiralize up like three or four zucchini. And then I'll put just paper towels on them in a glass dish. And then I'll just pull them out. And then I'll look in the fridge and just start adding things to it. And so then I have, so the base of it is going to be my zucchini noodles and then everything else added on top. So if I've got cherry tomatoes or, um, you know, pieces of broccoli in there, a little bit of tofu, just dump it into, you know, when say dump it in, gingerly add it to your, your wok and, and then saute it up. And it is so good. It's a great, it's a great way and stuff to have a great lunch. All right. So then with that, so there's the spiralized, just give them a quick saute, like I said, but you can do, you can definitely keep them all raw. The bell pepper. And I'm gonna leave some of these because I want some of these to, on top, so that, we've got the noodles. Some zucchini because that will be pretty when we make it. Your favorite bowl. But a white sesame seeds. Those bowls really bring it all together. They do. You know, a lot of times you think you think you have to have all these colors and stuff to it. If you have food that's like this, and I always call it like the eye candy food that has all these beautiful colors, you don't need. You just, a white bowl is all you need. So then this is just black sesame seeds. I keep them more for just decorations when I'm making things, and they're great in pictures. Stir. So there. And then I'm going to make up the lettuce wraps. There is my sesame no, uh, sesame soba noodle salad. And like I said, I added some in the red cabbage and stuff, but that's, you know, that's pretty much just a fork is all you need. Or yeah. chopsticks. Or chopsticks. Yep. yep. Chopsticks would be great too, but it's wonderful. It's wonderful, hot or cold. Either one. That's the side. All right. Let's get a dish. So butter leaf lettuce, and lettuce, you could use, you know, you can use anything that you like. So, you know, if you want to have like kale wraps, collard wraps, you know, or, or anything like that, I just use the butter lettuce on this one. Um, and this one's the living, the living butter lettuce, which is really nice, but you have to be really careful because it's, it's dirty. It's really dirty. So I'm putting two of them together. So you just kind of pull off the ends just a little bit. Just that's the core part of it. Change that one out. It has a little rip in it. So there's the lettuce leaves. You get two of them. The nice thing about it, and the reason why you do two, is that it it actually keeps it when you're trying to like we're wrapping it up. You don't end up with it all down your arm, down the front of you, unless you're wearing a black chef jacket. But this is an easy way to do it. I'm gonna grab another.
spiralized all over my spoon. So there's the mixture. So there's the, so I've got the, the red, red, red bell peppers, the cauliflower. I did a little sauteing on the zucchini. It's not where it's like soft, soft. Um, it's more like al dente and stuff, but just kind of nice because you have, you know, you'll have like the warm lettuce leaves, but then I'm going to have the cold vegetables on it too, which just really adds to it. Just grab everything, get your cauliflower in there. And get my cauliflower. Cauliflower. These are probably, this is something that, that I know like Jerry loves, I love anything that we make like this when you get to just have it and then you have like, you know, four or five of them. Jerry's probably six to 10 of them. Um, eats them easily, does the soba noodle salad, but they're fun just because you can grab them up and they're like refreshing, but they're also very filling. So then I've got this bikini. So then you get the crispness. So when you're when you're trying to do something, you want a little bit of crispness. Having the raw vegetables is a great way to do that. Put that in. We'll just do a little chop of red bell pepper. Because you already have the the pieces of the red bell pepper, so it's just more for decoration. We've got Thai basil. And look how, I mean, look how pretty this is. Beautiful colors. Well, everything tastes better in purple. I would agree. <laughs> you and your purple. I love purple too. It's a beautiful color. I'm going to wait till I'm going to add the sauce to it. So I have lime wedges. Just do those two. I have chives. And if you don't, you know, since you already used the, the scallions, and that was the other thing I didn't add to the, you could always use just those if you want. I, I got chives, I got the greenery, all right, sauce. You are an artiste. <laughs> I like things to be pretty. It's not, I'm not saying that we eat this way all the time at all. There's times and stuff. It's like, well, here's the, you know, here's what we're doing and here's what we're eating. And it's, you know, that kind of thing. But when you're doing it, when you're doing a cooking class, it's really fun to, to show things that are just pretty. Okay. Now we got the Thai basil. I'm trying to find some of the, I love some of the, the purple. And then we're going to add That. A bit more of the red, the chives. You could always add sriracha, which would be really pretty. I'm going to do that really quick. And last but not least, a little bit of sesame seeds. And my favorite black sesame seeds. And 
everything out of the way. That is it. That's everything. So, oh, you know what we didn't add? I always forget something. All right, we're going to, well, I'll have to add those later. The picture. Could have added the noodles to that. I knew there was going to be something I was going to forget. Wait, you're supposed but, to put the noodles in the lettuce wrap? Yep. The noodles are supposed to go in there. So they're actually, do it really quick. Noodles. Well, that way you can see the noodles. Yeah, so it's just mix when you mix, when you've got all the mixture here with all the vegetables, add your noodles in and then just add it all together. And I missed that step. All right. So there, oops, one falls down. There is the Thai lettuce leaf wraps, or you can call them tacos, which is, you know, lettuce tacos, which is really good. Your lime, of course, is to, you know, to, to kind of give you a little bit more of that salt flavor, but also that pop of freshness, because usually when you do things, you really want to have that pop of freshness when you're, especially when you're listening to cooking shows. So like limes and lemons are really good for that. Then there is the soba noodles. These are room temperature. So, but you, like I said, you can heat them up and you can also do them cold, either one. But there we go. There is, there is dinner or maybe Jerry's late lunch. I don't know. One or the other. Guarantee um, you though, these you, will not last. You did it again. And if you guys would like hundreds, maybe even thousands more recipes like this, considering getting the vegan health bundle before it's gone at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on Sunday, March 10th, it will be gone forever, never to reappear again. It is worth over $8,000 for a very, very low price of $49. And if you'd like to get it from Kelly, the link is right below this video in what we call the show notes. Well, thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you. You're coming on again in April. And I think you're coming on before both Passover and Easter. I think so too. I will figure out some things for, for uh, Passover and Easter. That's Definitely. Great. Thank you so much, Kelly. Thank you. Have and a great rest of your day. Thank you. All, thanks all of you for watching so many shows this week during bundle week. And we so appreciate when you get the bundle from our wonderful contributors like Kelly, just by clicking the link, the link, the link below, and please come back soon for another great show.